Who the news? Stuart's having a party for his 18th. Hey, wild! You reckon? Look at this. A cocktail party. Semi-formal. And invites only. But it's your party. You can invite me. Yeah, but I mean, it wouldn't be your scene. A whole bunch of volleys. I mean, my mum, I think even McKenna's coming. So? Kirsty's trying to get Stuart away from his real friends, right? Which really sucks, especially on his 18th. So, let's do something about it. Like what? Spread the word around. Make sure bulk kids turn up. There's heaps of guys from my school that'll go. And I can ask those St. Joseph's dipsticks. Man, this is gonna be a rage. Between us, we'll give Stuart a party he'll never forget. Getting all this cheese and stuff done ahead of time, don't you think? You know, I went to this party once where they used butter instead of cheese as a joke. And then someone else pretended they'd done it once, but with soap. Oh, blast! Blast! Oh, I'm sorry, Kurt. Look, Gina, you weren't listening to me, were you? Oh, did you say something? If you want to talk about it, about Leonard, I'm a good listener. No, no, it's all right. There's nothing to talk about. We're just about done here for the night. Just a bit of tidying up to do. Why don't you go home and rest up for the big night? No, no, I mean, I'd rather be busy, you know. I'd only be at home, lying in my bed alone, wide awake, staring at the ceiling. I'd probably find some spots to clean or something, so... You sure? Yep, where do you want these? On the sideboard. Ah, the string quartet's probably got the wrong night or something. Sorry, I can't find my key. Surprise, surprise. Yeah, no, I'm not doing too well on the perfect flatmate contest, though. No, not really. I'm just lucky you're cute. Hey, Gina. What'd I say? Leonard. Right, so uh, is there anything I can do for the party? Should I dig a hungy pit? No, but you could do the dishes. You do remember how, don't you? New sheets for the wards. Bad colour. If you don't mind, this is Stuart's birthday present. He'll need them now he's gone flatting. Flannelette, you don't see much of that these days. There's no need to tease. Flannelette's very practical. Well, I'm sure he'll appreciate them much. I'm looking forward to tonight. I've got my cocktail gear out of mothballs. Are you going, Dr. McKenna? Tonight? Oh, Stuart's party. Yes, Alex and I would love to come, but I'm not sure. We've got a lot off. Mum. Hello, dear. Good to see you. George. Michael. I just uh, wish this was under happier circumstances. Oh, varicose veins are nothing to worry about. We'll have you up and running in no time. George is a little bit worried. He's not as brave as he tells everyone. Is that right? Well, you put his mind at rest, Mum. We'll all take very good care of him. Can I show you through to the ward? No, I would like that privilege. Thank you, nurse. This way, Mr. Bentley. Joe. Mark, what are you doing here? I need to borrow a few bucks. Why? Can I borrow a few bucks without having to go through the third degree? No. It's just me and the guys are going to some party tonight. I need some money to buy some goodies. You know, like juice and chocolate. Whose party is it? Questions, questions. I don't know. Some girl called Kirsty, I think. Kirsty? That's what I heard. Heard where? At school. Should be great. Last party we went to, they had to demolish the house afterwards. See you later. Welcome back. Thanks for popping in. Thanks for inviting me. <laughs> Just one thing. Yeah. A song. Yeah, it takes me back to... Turn it down before I rip your arms off. Oh, sorry, it's annoying you. It's just that it wasn't helping my beauty sleep. Would you like me to track down an aspirin? Better make it two. Mm. Oh, just in time. Got anything for pain? That's what I'm here for. Good, I'll take a cap off the top shelf. Anything for you, mm -hmm. Danny? Oh, don't worry about me, I'll be fine. Okay, a bit bath for madame? Here, yeah, let me. Done this before. Spent so much time in hospitals, I almost qualified as a nurse. Mm, his bedside man is really good. Oh, sorry, no offence. None taken. Now, this will take away your pain, OK? Hiya. How's it all going? Oh, I don't know about those two, but I'm doing fine. Oh, great. Yeah, it does you good to get things off your chest every once in a while. Now, Danny, you're going to have to start to take things a little more seriously. To teach you a lesson, I'm going to hold the stool and you're going to move your face around. She needs a little discipline every now and then. Mm, yes, please. Well, it looks like you've got it all under control. Yeah, we better leave them to it, eh? Mm. But no spanking. <laughs> Gina. Gina. <clears throat> Can we talk? This is important. First of all, I want to apologise for getting angry at you yesterday. It wasn't fair, and I'm sorry. I joined in on one of Steve's men's groups last night, and I 
finally realize that I haven't been honest about my feelings for you. I now know that I need to completely be open and frank about what's going on between us. I hope you don't mind. No, no, not at all. I mean, go right ahead. Good, because what I've been doing is I, I've been bottling up a lot of anger inside me. Bottling up and not letting it out. And uh, it's not doing any of us any good. I know. It's been very hard on you, and uh, that's over now. Because I now realize that I can never love you again. Not the same way as before. I'm sorry it's turned out like this, but I'm sure we can be best of friends because I'm still very, very fond of you. And I can see... Thank you very much. Love me like a sister. That's very cute, Leonard. Well, just you listen to me. I am sick to death of you and your feelings. What sort of a man are you anyway? I mean, I have tried to say I'm sorry to you a thousand times to show you how much I love you. Yes, love you, Leonard. And this is what I get. You, you think one night with an encounter group can make you a better person? Well, I've got news for you. You are a pathetic waste of space. You're a totally worthless human being. And from now on, you don't exist. Goodbye. There you are. Hi. Just getting quick. Pick me up, do you want one? Not just at the moment. It's a bit of a late one last night. Getting everything ready for Stuart's party. It's going to be so good. He's really looking forward to it. He wouldn't be if he knew about the gate crashes. Gate crashes? My brother was just in. He and his friends are going to gate crash the party. They're not exactly born again Christians. They must just be having you on. I mean, how would they hear about it? And apparently, it's all around the school. The school? What school? Ferndale High. Ferndale. Nick Harrison. So, how am I doing? Pretty good. I think it's going to heal up nicely. So, can we say the operation was successful? It went well. We should be able to start you on the chemo and radiotherapy in a fortnight, once we're sure you've recovered from the op. Oh, joy. Hello, Dr McKenna. How's the patient? She's in good spirits and mending nicely. Mm, he says I can start on the serious recreational drugs in a couple of weeks. Mm, how about the sun lamp treatments? Not yet, but I could get lucky. Mm, a winter tan. I'm jealous. <laughs> it's all thanks to my medicine man here. It's all part of the service. We just want to see you get well again, Danny. Well, how am I doing? Yeah, pretty good. Now your glaucoma, uh, what medication are you on? Oh, none. What, they didn't prescribe anything for it? Oh, yeah, but I flagged all that away. It was, it was making me dizzy and uh, I had to go out and have a pee every five minutes. Mm, side effects can be very annoying, but stopping medication can be worse. Oh, don't worry, I've got a great herbal remedy. Really works. Herbal remedy? Don't tell us you're into mung beans and leather sandals, George. Look, some of those herbal remedies can be very effective. Well, we should run some tests anyway. If only to prove you're the oldest hippie in existence. Happy or no happy, I still have connections in high places. Any more of your lip, my boy, and I'll summon my stepson. No. Not that. No, please. No. <laughs> so, how's me? Hey, oh, you get a box of fluffies. Married life seems to be really uh, suiting her. And me. Yeah, she uh, really knows how to look after a chap. Do you know what day the diabetic clinic is this week? No. Damn. Carrie was going to let me know. I need to know so I can prepare for it. Well, bad news. She isn't coming in today. Have you tried Jackie? No, I need to talk to Carrie. Perhaps I could contact her at home. Uh, that won't work. She hasn't been seen there for a while either. Has something happened? Um, actually, we had a bit of a blow up over Guy. Oh, dear. I think she's gone to stay with a friend for a while. Let the smoke clear. Who'd have a private life, eh? I know, I know how you feel. Tattered is not the word for my emotional state at the moment. What are you doing tonight? Crying into my cocoa, I think. Well, why don't you come to my place? We could cry together. Misery's best done in groups. OK. I'll bring the tissues. You're on. Uh, Nick Harrison, get over here. Whatever it was, I didn't do it. Oh, yes, you did. What's the big idea inviting Gate Crashes Anonymous to Stuart's party? Don't look at me. It'll liven the place up. Not with all those pimples and B.O. in the same room. If you didn't invite them, who did? Don't know. Tell me before I do something you might regret. Take it easy. It's no big deal. Rachel did it. Hey, I've been looking for you everywhere, guy. Yeah, take a good look. I'm out of here. I just want to check that you're OK, you know? After last night, you seemed a little emotional. Well, I'm just a little bit embarrassed now. 
Hey, man, you know, that's what all these groups are about, you know? They're about sharing. Problem shared is a problem half. Well, it doesn't seem to have worked in my case. Another life you've wrecked with your stupid men's group? No, 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 just a friend in need. <laughs> Express your feelings. Get things out in the open. What a load of rubbish. It works, Jim. Yeah, if you can't ruin relationships, it works very well. Leonard was full of self-expression. He never, ever wants to go out with me again. I hope you sleep really well tonight. What do you think? Was a gypsophila too much? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Wow, very homely. Yeah, Rob's gonna bring in the fireplace and it'll be perfect. <laughs> yeah, we're getting used to this, setting up house and hospitals. It's just like going on holiday. The rooms are clean, the food's okay. And the hide help's always pleasant. And like holidays, they cost money. Aren't you supposed to be taking a music lesson soon? Yeah, I could cancel it. <laughs> One more lesson won't make any difference to little Miss Elspeth Tone Deck. No way. Be a man about it. Go forth and provide for your woman. You're right. As usual. Back soon. If you're going out, leave a contact number. <laughs> Great. No, they're for you. Oh, to tell you the truth, I hate them. <laughs> I haven't had the heart to tell him, I just chew and bear it. <laughs> you know, as much as I enjoy having him here, running after me, it's nice to be by myself, have some time out. I feel like I always have to put on the happy face for him. <laughs> well, just tell him if you need time alone. You're calling the shots. Yeah, he'd be so understanding about it too, poor lamb. <laughs> nice guys, eh? Mm. Good to have around, so hard to get rid of. <laughs> OK, your pre-med tablets. They'll relax you a little before your operation. But can't I have a cup of tea to wash them down? Sorry, I kneel by mouth except the tablets. Yeah, but I need to have a cup of tea to have with my biscuit. I always have one about this time. Yeah, May makes them. They're delicious. I'm sure they are, but I'm afraid they're a no-no until after your operation. Tell you what, why don't I put them in the fridge? I'll keep them fresh until you get back. Oh, you're the boss. Look, if you're a good girl, I might let you have one for afternoon tea. But only one, mind. I don't want you eating all of my supplies. Thanks, I might just do that. <laughs> Stuart, are you home? Hi, I was just putting something away for Stuart. How did you get in? Was the door unlocked? No, I let myself in. Stuart gave me the key. Oh, sure. I bet it's the same key he thought he lost. He doesn't even know you're here, does he? And I'm certain he doesn't know that you invited half of Nick's school to gatecrash tonight. I didn't. Don't lie to me. What are you trying to do? Are you trying to ruin his party? Don't blame me. Nick invited them. Nah. He's too dumb to be this devious. This is your idea. Anyway, it's none of your business. It's Stuart's party. He should invite who he likes. He did. So you reckon. What are you up to, Rachel? I thought you were Stuart's friend. And said you're trying to ruin his party and probably destroy this house. Now, what's he going to think when he finds that out? You wouldn't tell him, would you? That I was sort of involved? <laughs> sort of. Please don't tell him. Why shouldn't I? Because he'd go right off me. Sabotaging a party isn't the nicest present for your boyfriend, you know. So why'd you do it? Oh, it's just him and you. All right, if you must know, I'm jealous. <sighs> Sorry? Of you and Stuart, ever since he's moved in, he's not interested in me anymore. It's like I don't exist. Look, that's stupid. Me and Stuart, we're just flatmates, okay? He lives here, and so do I. There's nothing going on, so just accept it, all right? All right. I guess so. I'm sorry about the gate crashes. I could try and stop Yeah, them. well, it's a little bit late for that now, isn't it? Sorry. It's a living. Yes, but at what cost to my musicianship? Not to mention my sanity. Listening to young kids trying to saw their way through the cello is not exactly my idea of fulfilment. I'm off for the day. Thought I'd better check up on you before I go. Wake up, Danny. It's time for your sleeping pill. Oh, I don't know, but I think it's the air conditioning. I think it's probably lack of rest. Yeah, right. She's trying to keep me awake. Uh, Jackie's right. I could do with some shut-eye. So could you. Get out of here. Oh, I can doze off here. You won't even know I exist. Oh, with your snoring, no. Go home. Get some proper sleep. Mm. I'll still be here tomorrow. And she's right. What if the boogeyman gets me? Bad luck for the boogeyman, I'd say. <laughs> uh, if you're sure. I'm sure. I'll see you tomorrow.
There you go. Sustenance from a bag. Yum. You make them yourself? Oh, yes. Old family recipe. I seal them in plastic so they last longer. Mm, delicious. Mm. You're a great cook. You'll make mm. some man happy one day. I'm sorry. It's OK. <sighs> so, stop me if I'm being nosy, but how are things between you and Guy? Oh, it's a long story. Carrie was looking for sperm donors. Sky was one of them. I didn't think he should, but he went ahead and did it anyway. Excellent results. There's no way of telling who the father is. Could be any of the donors. That's not the point. What is then? Well, you're not accusing him of being unfaithful, are you? <sighs> what then? Because he hasn't, technically speaking. Neither has Gina, technically speaking. No, but that was different. She expressed an interest in another man. She betrayed my trust. When a couple get together, there's bound to be misunderstandings. You've got to forgive her. Move on. Build on it. You're a fine one to talk. Physician, heal thyself. Oh, it's not the same thing. Gina is a good person. Guy is a rat bag. He's not going to change. You think so? Hmm. He was beside himself with the men's group last night. He talked about his relationship and how important it was to him. He talked about us to all of you? He couldn't help himself. He was so upset. It wasn't an act either. He really loves you, Meredith. There you go, George. Have a sip of that. Your mouth could probably do with the rinse. <sighs> Tastes like the bottom of a parrot's cage, feathers and all. Well, in that case, have two sips. I'd much rather have a cup of tea and one of my biscuits. Mmm, it's probably best you wait a bit, sorry. Well, well when exactly? Well, you've got to give your body time to adjust after the anaesthetic. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry I snapped. It's just so I feel like a cup of tea and a biscuit and I get a bit grumpy when I can't have it. Where are you, Biggies? Oh, that... that young nurse, Jo. She said she'd put him in the fridge for safekeeping. Well, as I said, it's probably best if you wait a bit, but... I'll go and check them out. Oh, you see that you do that. <laughs> you thought my eyes adored you was what? Aye, aye, St Georgia. <laughs> Does it make sense? Easy mistake. <laughs> Don't tell me you've never done it. <clears throat> Once. Confess up. You know the theme song to an officer and a gentleman? Yeah, yeah, Joe Cocker and what's her face? Mm -hmm. Well, I thought it was, um, the lift goes up and we get on. <laughs> but at least it makes sense. <laughs> mm. oh, it's getting on. I'd better go. Yeah, me too. Hey, you got anything planned for later on? Nothing special, why? Me neither. What say we do it together? I could do with some company. Yeah, sure, why not? Hey, do you know who these are? Hey, thank you, Sammy, they're for Stuart's party. Oh, you and Linda going tonight? I don't tell me you haven't sorted it out yet. Linda's looking really messy. Leonard? <laughs> Dr. Leonard Dodge, your main man. I'm sure I don't know who you're talking about. <sighs> hey, Chris. We were just discussing the party tonight, man. It's going to go on. It's going to be a disaster. Rachel just sent out the word that it's an open house. So what are you going to do? Not a lot. Panicking seems to be about the only thing left. Kirsty, 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 relax, relax. You just stick with Sam the man. Stevie! What? Nothing. How come you're in such a good mood? I don't know. Yeah, sure, Joe. Just help yourself. Are you going to Stuart's party tonight? I can't wait to get down and boogie. <laughs> What's going on here, pal? Must be party fever. I'm out of here. Yeah. Catch you later. George. You warm enough? Here. Yeah. Uh, you sure? Oh, no worries. I don't feel the cold. <laughs> having had my nervous system removed at birth. So tell me, why are you here in the freezing cold when you could be growing old in front of the fire? <laughs> Haven't you got a significant other? I did. But that's all I mean. You mind if I cry? No, not at all. It just didn't work in the end. I wanted a relationship. 
He wanted a sporting career, mm. and it all fell apart. A sportsman, eh? Mm. Yeah, they're the worst sort. Next to musicians and writers and <laughs> shoe salesmen. <laughs> Who was he? He plays cricket. He knew Tamariki? Oh, uh, yeah. I've seen him on the telly. Good teeth. They all his? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Don't mean to go on. It's just he comes across as a nice guy. No, oh, don't be fooled by appearances. That's what my mum always says. Yeah. Don't mind too. <laughs> the important thing is not to let it put you off altogether. It'd be a waste. Hate to admit it, but it's really nice to be out of hospital mode for a while. <laughs> not entirely. I'm still here. Yeah, but you're off duty, aren't you? Um, I have to start again in the morning. I'm gonna get going. Please, no, not yet. The night hasn't begun. And besides, I'm enjoying myself. I haven't had much of an opportunity to talk to anyone for a long time. Especially not someone as understanding as you. Well, I'm having a good time too. Just as well. <laughs> Did I say uh, intelligent and witty? No, but uh, please do. How about incredibly attractive? Keep talking. I'd rather not.